today is an extraordinary day. We had a lot of different cases, very educational cases, and I am going to present one of them now. This is a 72 years old male with Clodican at 100 meters. So one month ago, this patient underwent a percutaneous peripheral SFA, SFA intervention, and I am going to summar summarize this SFA intervention. This this summary, this, 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 this summary is important because after this SFA intervention we had a, a, a complication which we are now going to deal with after this presentation in the cat lab. So this is the 72 year old case one month ago, this is the one month ago uh, selective angiography and you see that the popliteal artery is totally occluded along the peroneal artery and you see the peroneal artery is, 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 is filling in the distal part in the distal part of the knee. So it was a very difficult intervention. We had a lot of difficulty to, to cross this lesion. It was a hard calcific lesion. So we had to do a tibialis posterior insertion of a sheet and a tip, we, we had a retrograde approach so you see the retrograde approach and I'm going fast and just summarizing what we have done so after this intervention we we managed to pass this lesion with a reverse reverse cart procedure and now we are in the lumen and with after the bolon dilatation we finalize this procedure with a uh, with a balloon dilatation with an with a drug eluting balloon dilatation and this result I I'm going to show you the end result of the of the intervention and this is the end result the patient had no more clodicum uh, you see here is an extravasation of blood we left this artery in this in, in this case, in this in this event, so after one month, the patient come with uh, a bulging behind the knee and had a lot of pain and also a deep venous thrombosis accompanied his his pain. So after after ultrasound imaging, the 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 the, the, the radiologic doctor advised and DCA and I am now going to show you the DCA uh, the of the the patient so this is the this is the sub subtraction and geography we have done after ultrasonic imaging this is not the one I am going to show you the we have done a radial angiography after one month after the Doppler ultrasound and you can see here this aneurysm, this pulsating aneurysm, and this pulsating aneurysm put a lot of pressure on the venous system. Therefore, the venous system, there is an obstruction of the venous system with the thrombosis. So now our intention is now to treat this. Uh, we, we, we sent this patient to, to two different surgeons and the surgeon didn't want to operate this patient. So we had to do it interventionally. So our aim is now to put a graft stand here at the, at the level of the knee and to alleviate the pressure that, that, that causes the obstruction of the deep ven venous system. So now we are heading to the cat lab and I will meet you there in the cat lab during this this intervention and I will show you how we treat this patient interventionally. Now we are in the cat lab so our intention is to deal with the popliteal aneurysm so we are now ready. I have my technician with me uh, Ismail and my nurse is, is Nurjan and we are now beginning with a left femoral puncture. Our intention is to cross over to the right femoral artery and then go down to the popliteal artery and then then you would depopulate aneurysm. So our first step is to, to, to have a puncture 
to the, to the left grain, groin, I can feel the femoral artery, so uh, I don't need any landmark for this for this function. Now I have given, I am now giving the patient some kind of anesthesia, local anesthesia, and then I'm just feeling the left femoral artery and trying to, to puncture it. I'm feeling the femoral artery and you can see the landmark. We have some kind of calcification here and this calcification will help us to puncture the femoral artery. So we, we have some kind of fibrosis here and it's, it's, it's a bit painful for the patient. I will take some shots. This landmark helped us a lot. Now we are in the in the femoral artery, but this this calcification will yeah we are now in the femoral artery. It's, it's, it's our first step. We are putting a six French sheet for, for the beginning. It's a bit, a bit difficult to go with the sheet because we have we have heavy calcification here. Show me. Show me. I think we need a stiffer wire. This classification is very difficult to cross. So the I, I use the dilatator. I am removing the sheet. I am crossing with the dilatator. And then we will use a stiffer wire to put this six thread sheet here. This classification prevents us to, to to put the sheet in this, in this, yeah, we are with the dilatator. So, and at the first time we have real difficulty, so I put the dilator first, not the sheet, and then remove the, the, the wire, and then put the stiffer wire so I can put the, the six turn sheet over the stiffer wire. This is now plus wire. This is a plus stiff wire. So I'm trying to do it now over this over this stiff wire. So I'm going to It was very difficult, even with this stiff wire, to, to insert the six French sheet in the femoral artery, but we managed to do it. So, our first step is complete, but it was difficult at the first step, but you can see we are now in the right direction. This is the internal mammary artery catheter. Six French, and now we have the thermo hydrophilic wire, uh -huh. and we will try to cross over to the to the right popliteal artery by crossing the left femoral artery. So we are just trying to 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 cross to the to the right. Yeah, now you can see we are in the in the right direction, but yeah. And we are crossing with this EMA catheter to the iliac artery, and then we are going to place an amplatz wire, and then place the 6.5 sheepless catheter right into the right from our right. So now 
here we are putting the wire. This is the outlet stiff wire. This is a this is a hard wire, so we can carry the the the, the sheetless catheter. So this is, this is this is enough for us. Now we are removing the the EMA catheter, and then we will remove the, the sheet that we put in the left femoral artery and then make our crossover with the final sheetless this is an Asai sheetless 6.5 catheter the patient has pain behind his knee because of the palpitator aneurysm this is a painful, painful one First we have to remove the, yeah, now we have to remove the, the, the sheet and then put the sheetless catheter or the plastic wire. Now we have taken the digital subsection and geography and you see the palpital aneurysm, the pulsation of the palpital aneurysm. There are some critical points that we need to tackle with. One of them is we have to cross the aneurysm at first and then we, we, we need a greater sheet to put a graft stand here. Our intention is to put a graft stand but we need a stiffer wire to, to, to put the stand, the graft stand here in this popliteal aneurysm. This popliteal first we use a 0.35 microcatheter and a gladius wire, an 018 gladius wire to cross the aneurysm and then put a stiffer wire over the, the 0.35 microcatheter now plus wire after over the 0.35 microcatheter and now we have this gladius wire this is an 018 wire we use its hydrophilic capacity and and the stiffness of this wire you can see how this wire goes into the aneurysm I I am I am just avoiding to make a loop because a loop would make this this case more worse than we plan it so I'm trying to to cross cross this this aneurysm this multiple aneurysm and then with the help of an O35 microcatheter I am now putting the microcatheter over the wire and 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 afterwards I will check whether I am in the right artery so you see how the wire is looping in the aneurysm so I need yeah I need I need the help of the microcatheter so I think I'm true and a tip injection will be needed to see that I am in the right direction so we can we can give some contrast and and see how we, where we are so we, we have crossed the, the lesion so from this from this point I am retrieving the, the, the gladius wire and I will put the unplastic wire just to carry the, the graft stand now the microcatheter is in the peroneal artery and carefully I am advancing the unplastic wire. This is a this is O35 wire. It is very tricky and risky to put this wire in the peroneal artery because this this wire can easily give to perforation of the peroneal artery which will make the procedure more complex than we planned. So we have to be very carefully and then I am retrieving carefully the, the, the microcatheter, retrieving the microcatheter. Now we have to retrieve the sheetless 6.5, this, this, this diving catheter and now we put a needle in over the skin so as a landmark to put the stand, to, to adjust our stand because we have we, we can't give contrast material during the, the, the process. We have to 
we, we have to change this shitness with a 9F, 9F sheet. So we, our landmark is just this needle we put over the skin. The, the needle is now over the patient's skin, not to lose our landmark. And now we are changing our shitness with a 9F, 9 French sheet. And then we put the stand adjusting according to the, to the landmark. Now we are using a Bart brand vascular graft and we need a 9 French sheet to put this, this the stand over the wire, over the armpits wire. And we are now trying to advance this, this stand over, over the stiff armpits wire right into the right pole of the artery. The crossover is a critical point here, so we carefully advance the stand. Now we are true and this step has been achieved. We can't put the stand over this outlet wire, so we are now true with our stand. You can see our landmark and we are in a good position, but we have to change the wire. We have to change the wire. so. In order to prevent any blockage of the stand, this stiff wire may block the, the stand and we may not we may not dilate the stand. So we are now changing our ampla stiff wire with a hydrophilic stiff body, a conger. It's it's also I think a product of acai. So uh, this this is a hydrophilic wire and a stiff wire but uh, uh, more, 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 more uh, yes. flexible one for, for this for this course. We are now removing the protection of the stand, and now we are loosening the distal end of the stand, and then and then pushing the metal one and removing. Uh, it's a bit tricky and difficult, but. This is what we are talking about. Yeah, we had, we had some blockage even with this hydrophilic wire. It was very difficult to open the stand because the calcification hindered us during the, the opening of the self extendable graft stand. But now we managed to open the stand with success. Now we have ended the procedure. The patient is very well. We put a 7 to 100 millimeter fluorescence stent right into the popliteal aneurysm. Our expectation is that this popliteal aneurysm had put pressure on the venous system and the patient had also a deep venous thrombosis. So by putting this stent we hope that the, the pressure will alleviate and the deep venous thrombosis will be, will be treated easily than before. So this is the this is the, 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 the angiogram before before the treatment and this is after the treatment. And so the patient feels well and we will see what happened in the in the next few weeks.